Have you ever wondered how to film yourself? Whether you're looking to start a new YouTube channel or you just need to film a quick presentation in front of the camera, there are some tools and tricks to help make this process a lot easier. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips of how to film yourself, plus show you the behind the scenes of the Gemini Connect Studio where I film a lot of these talking head videos. We just did a really big revamp of the studio, so I'll take you behind the scenes and show you the entire set up. So even though I talk a lot about vlogging cameras on this channel, I'm not necessarily referring to vlogging in terms of how to film yourself, although you can use some of these tips to vlog, but I'm talking more about being in a stationary setting where your camera is planted and you can control the setting around you. So the first thing you need to film yourself is a camera. If you've seen our videos on this channel before, then you probably know that we talk a lot about different cameras and accessories that you need for vlogging. So I've talked a lot about our favorite cameras, which are currently the GoPro Hero 10, as well as the Fujifilm X-T3, which is what I'm currently filming on. But our newer camera that we just picked up is the Sony a7 IV. And so I really love this camera because it has one feature that is really helpful, but not necessarily uh, essential, but that is a flip screen. So having a flip screen on your camera of choice is definitely very helpful so that you can see yourself as you're filming yourself. But if you have a camera without a flip screen, then it's not a problem. You can also use a monitor. So I actually use a Shinobi uh, monitor on my Fujifilm X-T3 since that camera does not have a flip screen. And so that's how I'm able to compose my shot and see what it looks like as I'm filming or right before I start filming. So one tip is no matter which camera you use, make sure to look directly into the lens as you're filming to make it look like you're giving eye contact to your audience. Now, if you don't have a fancy camera, then don't worry because most modern day smartphones are really good at filming video. And you can even use the front facing camera to film yourself, plus have a screen to show you exactly what you're filming. So smartphones are definitely a viable option for filming yourself these days. So if you opt for a camera that has an interchangeable lens, then which lens is best for filming yourself? Well, it depends on your exact situation and scenario, but in general, I think a mid-range zoom, such as a 24 to 70, is a really good option because it doesn't have distortion and it is also able to zoom in a little bit if you're further away from the camera. So I'm using on the Fujifilm right now kind of the equivalent of a 24 to 70. It is a crop sensor camera, so it's not exactly a 24 to 70, but it's very close. And so it's the 18 to 55 kit lens, which is what I use to film pretty much all of these talking head videos inside of my studio. If you're rolling with a camera like the GoPro, this is traditionally an outdoor camera, but you can actually use it indoors. I did another video talking more in depth about how to film yourself indoors with a GoPro, but a really quick rundown for settings is that you probably wanna be shooting in linear because again, that eliminates that fish eye distorted look that everybody associates with GoPro. As far as camera settings go, you want your resolution to be at least 1080p, but even up to 4K, which is what we shoot a majority of our videos in. You also want to make sure to choose a frame rate that is, you know, 24 frames per second, which is considered cinematic, or even 30 frames per second if you prefer that instead. And your shutter speed then should be double that of your frame rate, which gives you a cinematic look. So if you're shooting at 24 frames per second, move your shutter speed over to 1 50th of a second, and for 30 frames per second, have it be 1 60th of a second. Your aperture should be relatively shallow, but not too shallow. So somewhere between maybe f4 or even down to f2.8 if you want to blur out your background a little bit and if your lens allows you to do that. And your ISO should be the lowest possible so that you have even exposure in your whole frame. And if you're shooting somewhere where you can't control the lighting and it's really bright when you have these settings, then you might need an ND filter, which goes on the front of your lens and it just darkens the entire scene so that you can shoot in the cinematic settings while keeping your lighting really even. And since I mentioned lighting, I will talk a little bit more about that soon. But first of all, let's talk about sound. So pretty much every single Single camera does have internal microphones so that you can pick up a certain degree of audio. But for the most part, that audio is going to be just subpar compared to using an external microphone. This is what it sounds like to use the internal microphone on the Fujifilm X-T3. 
Now there are a lot of different microphone choices out there, but for someone just starting out with a lower budget, I would recommend getting a wired lavalier microphone. You can clip the microphone to yourself and then you plug the other end directly into your camera and having the microphone directly underneath you really amplifies your voice and makes sure that you don't get a lot of external noise. This is what it sounds like using a wired lavalier microphone. Another similar but slightly pricier option is a wireless lavalier microphone, such as the Rode Wireless Go. This is the Rode Wireless Go 2 in particular, so I can have two separate microphones, but the advantage to a microphone like this is that you can clip it to yourself. It has an internal built-in microphone, so you can clip this part directly to yourself and then you have the other part which goes directly on top of your camera and plugs in and now you can have the benefits of that wired lavalier microphone without being tethered directly to your camera. And this is what it sounds like using the Rode Wireless Go 2 wireless lavalier microphone. So the final microphone option that you can use is a shotgun or directional microphone, such as this Rode VideoMic Go 2. So these microphones go on top of the camera on the cold shoe. And so for that reason, it's best if you're standing relatively close to the camera and the microphone in order for it to pick up your voice really well. But if you're not, then you can also put this up on a boom arm and have that microphone be a lot closer to you. And then you just use a longer extension cable to plug the microphone into your camera from afar. But that's the entire setup that I have here. It's a newer setup that we just set up inside of our studio. And so this way I can have the benefits of the shotgun microphone, but have it be directly overhead and not have to be super close to my camera. So I just like the simplicity of having this in as my studio microphone. This is what it sounds like to use the Rode NTG microphone directly on top of the camera. This is what it sounds like using the Rode NTG microphone up on a boom pole and the microphone is just overhead. But one thing to note is that if you are shooting videos with a smartphone, you want to make sure to have a microphone that is compatible with your smartphone because most microphones are TRS compatible, meaning that they'll only work with cameras. You need something that is TRRS compatible in order to use it with your smartphones. And in the case of a lot of these microphones, they actually can work directly with your smartphone, it's just a matter of having the right cable. If you are choosing to film indoors, then you want to take into account possible echo that might happen in your room. And that's especially true in our case because our room was super small, it had a hardwood floor, as well as a hard ceiling, no windows, really nothing inside of the room. So the initial echo in this room was pretty awful. And it's still not the best, but we've done a few things to try to minimize that echo. The first thing we did was we added a carpet or a rug inside of this room and that I think did a lot in order to absorb some of the echo that was happening. And the second thing we did was we added a ton of sound panels, like everywhere. And so sound panels are pretty cheap to get on Amazon, but we added the sound panels in the front as well as up on the ceiling and then a couple on the sides as well. And so the combination of the rug plus the sound panels I think did a lot in order to reduce the amount of echo happening in this room. And so those are two things you might want to do to your own room that you're using to film yourself. Besides being Small, our filming room also has no windows, which means no natural lighting, and that's actually a good thing. So when you're first getting started, people often tell you to use natural lighting because that's what's available. And indeed, natural lighting can be really great for photos and videos, and I do use it quite a bit. However, if you're trying to set up a place where you want to film yourself on a regular basis, or you're going to be filming yourself for longer than a few minutes, then having natural lighting is not necessarily the best option. And that's because natural lighting changes very frequently. It changes throughout the day, sometimes by the minute, especially if you're here in Seattle. And so sometimes you can have, you know, really abundant, bright, harsh sunlight come in. And then a few minutes later, it gets cloudy and dark and dim. And so it's really hard for your camera and all of your equipment to adjust whenever your lighting source is changing like that. And so to avoid that problem, if you are shooting somewhere with windows or with a lot of natural lighting, a lot of people actually like to use blackout curtains or something to block out the window in the natural light. And instead, they want to use artificial light because that is something that you can make consistent and not have it change very frequently. 
So there are all kinds of artificial lights to choose from. They can be really small and powerful like these loom cubes, or they can be slightly bigger such as the Wii light that I'm using currently to film this video. But no matter what kind of light you're using, you want to try to make it as big as possible. And that's because the bigger the light, the softer the shadows, and the more pleasing it's going to look on your subject. And so even if you have a smaller light like this, you can make it look bigger just by adding a reflector or a diffuser on top. Not a reflector, a diffuser. You could add a bigger diffuser on top of the light so that it spreads out the light and therefore lessens the shadows. Above all, do not use your ambient lights only because most cases those lights are made to make a room look good and not necessarily make the subjects in the room look good. So turn off any ambient light that you might have inside of your room. So now I've talked about all of the cameras and accessories that you need to film yourself. There's just one last thing that you need, and that is a mount or something to put all of this camera gear on to film yourself. So the first thing I'd recommend getting if you don't already have one is a tripod. So this is my tripod here. It's a Manfrotto tripod and I absolutely love it for both photos and videos. And I've actually done something to make it a lot easier to use this tripod in a filming situation. And that is I added wheels to the bottom of my tripod. It's just a third party extension and I'm able now to move my tripod around seamlessly without having to you know, lift it up like this which is what I was doing for a long time, and that can get really heavy and weigh down in your arms. So if you're using a tripod, the easiest thing you can do is get a set of wheels to go along with it. But once you have your tripod, you can now attach your camera on top of it, and you can also add your monitor and your microphone or any other accessories that you need on top of your camera. Now, if you have multiple accessories, such as your camera monitor and your microphone, and you want to add them both on the top of your camera to the cold shoe, you can actually do that by adding a cold shoe extension plate. And so I'd recommend picking up at least one of these, maybe even a couple, depending on how you like to use accessories with your camera. But this is one way to put multiple things on top of your camera cold shoe mount. Also, certain accessories, such as camera monitors, sometimes have little quarter inch tripod threads on top of them. And you can actually use those in extension with other adapters in order to add extra mounts to those monitors so that you can add your accessories on top of them. So there are all kinds of ways to add your accessories to the top of your camera if you only have a tripod to work with. And as for your artificial light, if you're using one, it should come with a light stand. If it doesn't, then you wanna pick up a light stand because these are really handy for mounting not only lights, but also your microphones. If you're using like a boom arm, you can oftentimes use them with light stands as well. But make sure that you have that light up on a light stand so that you can have it out of your frame. So using all of those accessories and mounts that I just mentioned, this is what my filming studio looked like for the past few years as I was trying to film myself. And even though it was getting the job done, it was pretty messy behind the scenes. It was also a safety hazard because I was frequently tripping over my light stand and my tripod and so I wanted to really fix that in our newer studio. And so for the studio, I decided to get rid of the tripod and the light stand and minimize everything into one single stand. And so my current setup is based on one that I saw from DSLR video shooter, Caleb Pike. I think a lot of other YouTubers also saw his video because there are quite a few videos out there with a similar setup, but that's because this setup is really, really good and it works really well. So the biggest part of this whole setup is a C-stand, and that replaces my tripod as well as my light stand. Because C-stands are basically a bigger version of a light stand. Because they're so big and sturdy, they were a really great base to hold everything else. So because C-stands are already light stands, we're gonna use it for that purpose first. So the first thing I added was my Wii Light Ninja with the double diffusion dome, and I have that just off the camera right here. The second thing I added was a Manfrotto clamp. And to that clamp, I added an extension. And then I added a quarter inch tripod thread spigot. And to that spigot, I added a Manfrotto quick release plate. 
This allows me to quickly attach and detach the camera from the mount. The camera I have here is my Fujifilm X-T3 along with the 18 to 55 millimeter kit lens. And I'm also using the Fujifilm battery grip because that allows me to plug the grip into the wall so that my camera is always charged and I never have to worry about charging my batteries. And on top of the camera on the cold shoe mount is my Shinobi monitor so that I can see exactly what I'm filming. And the final thing that I added to my C-stand was an additional Manfrotto clamp. This one is a little bit different than the other clamp that I added because this one has a longer bar to which I added an adapter so that I can attach my microphone boom arm. This boom arm is easily adjustable. It can get taller or shorter and it can get further from the camera or closer. To the end of the boom arm, I've added my Rode VideoMic NTG, which is the main microphone that I'm using these days. And I have it just up here, right out of the camera frame. So that is everything that we're using in the brand new Gemini Connect filming studio to film ourselves. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below or if you have any suggestions on how to improve our setup because we're always looking for ways to make it better. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.